Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. If you're new to this channel, by the way, please consider subscribing. It's all about astronomy, astrophotography and everything in between. A lot of fun. At any rate, last videos, we worked on making this AZ GTI a decent portable equatorial mount for astro imaging. And so we set it up in equatorial mode. We added a counterweight bar not featured here, but we can just add it like this. We added a counterweight and then we added, well, nothing on top yet. What do we mount on it? We tuned it though. We did tune it, but what will we mount on top? So my recommendation for an ultralight imaging setup is something very simple, which involves Canon lenses and specifically Canon lenses. And I'll get to why in a moment. So here is a 200 millimeter millimeter F 2.8 lens that works very well when it's stopped down at F4. This is a 135 millimeter F uh, two lens, which works very well when it's also stopped at around F4, F 3.2 is decent. And I have also a 50 millimeter f1.4 Canon lens that uh, is pretty decent at f2.8 to f3.2. Uh, so you do need to close down the lenses to get good results, although you can keep them wide open if you're going to do narrowband imaging uh, because of the, the, very, the tightness of the, uh, the narrowband uh, image itself. And the reason why I'm saying Canon lenses, it's because they can, the autofocus motor of the Canon lens itself can be controlled via this Canon adapter by Astro Mechanics, which is a company in Russia. Uh, if you order directly from them, it takes forever to arrive uh, during these COVID-19 times. So just be aware of that. There is a reseller in Japan. That's where I got this one with this one from. You, it's very simple. You'll, you'll take your lens, you line up the pins of the lens to the pins of the, uh, of the adapter. You, you screw it in and then you simply have a mini USB port um, that is available here. For my side, I never required any com computer power. And then you can plug it into the computer or into a USB port like the USB port of an ASI camera. And with that, you can control the focus ring of the lens, which means you can have autofocus with an Astro camera, even without a DSLR, which is awesome. And you can, um, so it, it goes a very long way into automating the setup. Now you have this adapter. The problem is that from the lens, the, the flange of the lens to your sensor, you need to have 44 millimeters plus any changes due to, to any filter with filter thickness. And so you need to kind of improvise because you do need a filter if you're going to use an astronomy camera. And what I'm going to use is the ASI 533MC Pro, but really the 183 with its very tiny pixels is probably best adapted to this kind of setup. So you get a very good resolution for the uh, small setup. So how do we get the back focus right? The back focus is probably the most difficult part, especially since you want to filter at least a luminance filter between uh, here and the camera. So the seller in Japan of the Astro Mechanics adapter actually has this adapter there that includes a, a place for a two inch filter to be mounted very easily. This is not available abroad. So I simply got it and you can see the system is very simple. I just unscrew this, uh, this part and then the filter here is actually just mounted. It's a two inch filter. This is a ZW dual band filter, uh, light pollution filter and you, you just inside that adapter and what's very cool with this uh, particular adapter is that you can actually, um, you, if you set it up on your lens, then you put the, you can put the camera in directly. So if I screw the camera in directly, I'll have the proper back focus and I'll be able to reach focus with this lens. So it's very easy. Otherwise you'll, you'll have to use a filter drawer. Uh, which is more convenient if you want to change filters or you will have to use a technique where you unmount a two inch filter and you put it in some um, manual adapter. And I have a video on that. If you're interested on that, that can help when you have very limited back focus. So uh, please go and check it above. And with that, once I screw in the camera, I have the whole imaging train, which is great because I have the camera with the main USB port. I can, my camera has a USB hub. 
So I can just connect the USB hub to the Astro Mechanics adapter to control the autofocus, also the aperture of the lens. Although for the lens aperture, since you'll want to probably close it down unless you're doing narrow band, you'll likely want to, instead of using the aperture ring within the lens, which basically creates like star spikes, uh, you may want to use instead step down rings, which are uh, very cheap rings that you can use. There are sets available on Amazon for like 10 bucks that can use to, um, that are normally used by photographers to offer by, by you know, photographers to uh, diminish the aperture of a lens so you can mount a smaller filter on top without needing to buy a bigger filter in front of the lens, for the front of the lens. You buy those, they're perfectly round and they do not in introduce aberrations like star spikes. And like that, just like that, we have a tiny, a really tiny imaging setup, which I think is awesome. And if you went for something like the 15 millimeters f1.4 lens, then you have like a really, really, really tiny setup. Uh, plus, you know, with 50 millimeters, you probably don't even need that. <laughs> well, you know, you could get that and you, you don't ever need to guide because the resolution is so bad. Now you need to be able to put that on, the, on top of that. And obviously doing that doesn't quite work. You will not use super glue for that. So uh, the easiest solution, and that's what I originally did, is to buy, if you have a ZW camera, I don't know about QHY, but ZW has those rings, second generation rings for the camera itself. Now this one was for my uh, ZW ASI 071 MC Pro, which is a bigger camera than what I have right now. So I cannot use it on my camera, but the big advantage of this is it has a mic, uh, an M3, uh, a 3 8 of an inch uh, screw adapter in here. So it's very easy to adapt to anything like a dovetail like this where I have a, uh, just a 3 8 of an inch uh, screw in there. So I can just screw that in easily and then I can put on my camera. And if my lens is small, like the 50 millimeters f1.4 lens, that's all I need. And what's great is at the top, you have uh, screw holes where you can actually mount, like I did here, um, a guider, um, a finder shoe where you can actually set up a guider. And that's probably the best way to do things. Uh, that's probably what I would recommend. I'm not sure yet, yeah, there it is. We have the guider fully in there. And you can imagine if, I, if my camera was the right size for that, I'd just be able to slide it in and we'd be almost done. And then we can just screw in the dovetail plate and mount that on top, everything's done. Um, so that's one way of doing it. If you have a longer lens, you may want to buy um, a ring for that longer lens, again, from Amazon. And that particular ring, it works for the 200 millimeter lens for me and I can just, you know, uh, mount it on. So I'll have one ring supporting the lens, one ring supporting the camera, and then it works perfectly. So that's another way to do things. Uh, but what I did in the end is, again, from the same company that sells the Astro Mechanics adapter and that custom ring, there is there are those rings that are extremely convenient. So I can simply slide my camera in and uh, and tighten the rings. So those those are awesome, but they're only, as far as I know, available in Japan. Maybe that's a business case. <laughs> Maybe I should uh, make them available abroad. Just uh, buy them and then uh, ship them abroad. Let me know if you're interested in the comments. <laughs> um, and just like that, I will have mounted my setup. So obviously I need to tighten all the screws. It takes a bit of time, blah, blah, blah. And here we are. The setup is here. I can mount it on top and I will have my astrophotography setup already there. Then I just need a computer. I have the autofocuser. I also need to set up a guider. And this is why I love this uh, ZWO. Um, adapter because you can actually put a guider on top that will be very securely attached. Uh, the way that I worked around that is I actually have uh, a screw. There are screw holes on those rings like here and I put a 3 8 of an inch screw here and I'm actually able to screw the guider here but it's a single point of contact and that's not really good. But still it is usable and I have used it fairly uh, successfully. So that's how you get a miniature imaging setup that's fully automated. You can control the mount, you can control the autofocuser, you can control the guider, you can control the camera and the camera uh, and the camera cooling, and that's it. 
this ultra portable fits in a backpack imaging setup. And you will see in a follow-up video to that, I'll be doing a reverse astro, astro trip where for some reason I had to go to Tokyo, spend the night, well, not to Tokyo, to the foot of Tokyo Tower, spend the night uh, in a nearby very cheap hotel. And I, I took the opportunity to go and image uh, the sky right at the foot of Tokyo Tower using this setup. And that's fit in a shockingly small backpack. So um, it's a really good, really portable imaging setup. And that I think is awesome. Now, um, with those lenses, it's good. I'm also working on another project. I'll probably do a, a separate video for that. But uh, I have a new little telescope. Ta-da! Magic! And if this is not the cutest telescope you have ever seen, I don't think we can be friends anymore. Well, you know, I think it's cuter than the red cat or the space cat or anything. It's just beautiful. I, I, look at this. Don't you want to hug it? You know, I don't even want to image with it. I just want to hug it like that and sleep with it. My wife might get pissed at that. Mm, I won't do it. Um, <laughs> but here we are. It's a beautiful scope. And what I'll do is I bought a ZW EAF. Um, autofocuser that will be adapting to here to actually have autofocus on this scope. Shockingly enough, that EF that I received has, as far as I could tell for now, almost no backlash, which is awesome. Um, and I'll be able to use this scope. Now, this little scope is a 61 millimeter APO, so triple, triplet APO with that f5.5 natively, but it is sold with a reducer that's almost as big as and heavy as the scope itself <laughs> that makes it uh, f4.5 and that becomes super interesting because you get um, sharper stars and that's why it's called sharp, sharp star than just the canon lens and so i'll go into details and into the first use of this right now you can see this dovetail has not been marred by any screw yet. I have never used it. It just arrived today. I smelled it, I hugged it, and I fell in love. <laughs> I don't want to mar it by, you know, putting it in there and then screwing the screw into that poor base and making that beautiful red dovetail with a little hole in there. Ah! <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And th what's really cool is that uh, you can actually do visual apparently with this. <laughs> no, no. It's just so cute, just so tiny and cute. If only we could have cute telescopes like that that were high aperture, but that's a physical Im impossibility. And it's actually really well done. And we have the reducer installed like this. And now I have an f4.5 super light little telescope that I can automate. So that's another possibility, just a very light, small refractor like this one. And you can make a great portable imaging setup. But with this, the advantage as well is that the lens itself, there's so many Canon lenses that are sold online on eBay and on other auction sites that are so cheap. So it's very easy to get such Canon lenses and it's really cool to be able to, uh, to you know, uh, use them. And that's why I really like Canon lenses for on-the-go imaging. And uh, I just want to compare a bit with uh, the star quality of the sharp star, sharp star, because it is true with Canon lenses, unless you're doing narrowband, you will get stars that will have a bit of coma, that will be a bit bloated, even when they're in focus or there's some kind of halo around them, that kind of stuff. It does happen unless you close down the aperture quite a bit, in which case it brings it almost to the level of this aperture. So, which is f4.5. Uh, so, um, that's pretty much it for this video. So, like tips and tricks to get the smallest, cutest, and most portablest uh, imaging rig um, ever. And I personally love this. And uh, I have some other stuff coming in to um, to pimp that setup. Right now, I'm uh, connecting to this to the mount wirelessly, and I use the SynScan Ascom driver. But I'm getting an EQ Direct cable, so I can use either EQ Mod our green swamp server, also known as GSS for it, which I started reusing recently. It's awesome. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you are new to this channel and you are not subscribed yet and are you are not subscribed yet, well, welcome to the channel. If this is the type of video that interests you, whether it's about like, you know, putting up 
putting together new equipment or reviewing new equipment or whether it's about tips and tricks for astrophotography um, or about technical stuff like camera sensors for astrophotography, well, feel free to go down below, click that subscribe button, click the notification bell. And uh, otherwise, you know, you can always go down, click on the like button, add a comment, let me know what you want me to talk about next time. If you have any ideas, comments, suggestions, it's all down in the comment and thank you so much for all your comments. I read all of them and you've seen I probably answer 99% of them. So thank you so much for watching. Whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.